What's up guys, Brian Durazi here. I'm at the Plus Life Media set where we just did our first recording, our first filming session for this season of uh, videos that we're doing. I do a little fitness segment that I host, interview guests every episode. First one went amazingly. Here, check out the set. Ooh. And then this is also the set for some other Plus Life content. So yeah, here we are. I wanted to check in and update you guys because in my last video I talked about dealing with anxiety and depression, which is still very real. It doesn't just disappear overnight, as many of you know. So um, one of my goals in my last video was to finally be able to secure a therapist. I did some digging. After I figured out how to do it through my insurance, it's not that hard. It was just a matter of finding it in the first place that was kind of a difficulty. So I got a therapist. She is a woman, and she's a lesbian, and she is clinically blind. Um, I bring that up because initially I wanted to be able to do virtual, you know, from my computer to theirs, and be able to do it kind of like a face-to-face. -face. And she told me that, and at first I was kind of like, oh, okay, that's not exactly what I was looking for, but I'm open to it, let's try it. Did it, it went really great, actually, and it was kind of nice, kind of comforting, just to have her in my ear, and it was almost like, She's speaking in my mind, and I'm in my, my office or my room or whatever, in my home, talking to a friendly voice in my head. So it worked really well. We were vibing. Uh, it's really comfortable and easy to talk to her. And I think that's really important when you're finding someone to speak with, that you're comfortable and it's um, casual, at least for me. I like it to be kind of like friends and she is the wiser counterpart who can you know, help me reflect and give some helpful advice. She did mention the term CPTSD. It's like PTSD, but with a C in the front, stands for complex. I'm not fully versed in CPTSD, so I'm, this is a learning thing. And so she wanted me to look up a CPTSD workbook. I'm checking it out, an audio book. I do a lot of commuting and driving so I can listen to it then, as well as at home while I take notes and do things like that. I just really love audiobooks lately. I don't read as much. It's really helpful. I can be in the shower listening to an audiobook, so it's my jam. So I'm gonna be doing that. Then uh, let's see, what else did we talk about? Um, she mentioned that anxiety tends to lodge in our muscles, in our musculature. So it's really important to do something physical in order to release it. Like animals, when they have anxiety, they shake it off after they've had a traumatic moment. We as humans, because our brains are more complex and we tend to overthink, we don't always do that. So namely, since I have a passion for working out, it's important that I not only do what I'm passionate about, but just the physicality of that might help in addition to guided meditation. She wants me to check out through like different apps like the Calm app. Yoga was her number one suggestion for doing something physical to release anxiety. So, you know, um, I don't know. I've, I don't think I've ever really tried yoga. It's not really my, I don't, I don't gravitate toward it. And that was the other thing that she said that I really liked is that she's gonna offer up a bunch of tools and exercises and um, different things that I can do to help myself and it's kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall seeing what sticks what do I like what do I gravitate towards what do I benefit from the most and then just sticking with those things I don't have to go with everything she suggests the other thing that she suggests that I look into without giving me any kind of like recommendation specifically because she can't do that with her with her degree and her background but she wanted me to look up cord cortisol managers cortisol has to do with stress hormone um, stress management uh, supplements. So namely those supplements would have ashwagandha and L-theanine. And those help regulate cortisol in your body so that you're not overly stimulated with anxiety all the time unnecessarily, which has so many detrimental effects which can affect your gut. I have digestive issues and constant gas and acid reflux. Um, I'm tired a lot lethargy. Uh, it can all be as a result from having constant chronic anxiety. So that's really cool looking into that as well. And yeah, so I'm just going to take notes on each session and then share them with you and um, just share my journey overall. Okay, I just realized that I was so bright in that when I, when you um, take the angle out, it, the picture ends up getting brighter and I didn't realize how bright it got. So this video might be a little more bright than I anticipated. This comment of the day is from 8th House Angie. 8th House Angie says, Rafe, 
Just being able to come here to verbalize how you are feeling is good for purifying and overcoming negative thought patterns. You're doing the right thing. I'm experiencing a low point as well. I tend to suffer from that horrible analysis paralysis syndrome. I am seeking the services of a spiritual counselor. Prayer helps as well. Blessings to you. So I just love this comment. I agree. Being able to talk about your feelings, and that's why therapists can be so helpful for so many people, or counselors, or psychologists, or whatever it is in your life, a mentor, a coach, just verbalizing it out loud in of itself can be um, a really healing therapy in of itself. So if you don't have something like that in your life, consider it. It's important so that we're not holding on to everything inside. She's experiencing a low point as well. Thank you for sharing. I always love you guys for being vulnerable as well and contributing to our community where we all share with each other and we got each other's back. And then she mentioned analysis paralysis syndrome. So that's something I've definitely dealt with a lot of my life. I overthink, I analyze. If I don't know what the outcome of an action that I want to take might be, then I have to think of every single possible outcome. And how do I react? What if that happens? What am I going to do? What if that happens? What if I don't know how to handle that reaction? What do I do? I don't know what to do. If I don't know what to do, then I'm not going to do anything. And that's a problem. Sometimes we just got to dive in, do stuff without knowing what's going to happen exactly, and then just trust the process. Trust that we're going to be able to find the answers eventually, or we're going to slip up and fail and fall on our asses. And that's okay too, as long as we learn so that next time we don't incur the same problem. Okay, and then finally, she said she's seeking the services of a spiritual counselor. Prayer helps as well. So I really like that comment because prayer to me isn't just about saying, hey, big guy, can you help me? Prayer is being vulnerable and real with yourself and honest and open and connecting to some form of higher power. And I feel like prayer is a form of gratitude. We're expressing gratitude that there's a plan, there's a purpose, there's a meaning to everything. And in that knowing of purpose is a form of reverence and appreciation. And, and so much good comes from gratitude. Gratitude helps us shift our perception. That's why I do gratitude journaling and I highly recommend it. Okay, that's the comment of the day. Thanks guys for watching. Stick around, I'm not nearly done with this whole journey. So I have plenty more to share. Always appreciate your comments. Please like this video. Um, it really helps me get the views up and get more exposure to a wider audience of people who, especially during this time, can use content like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you get notifications. Hopefully, when I post these videos, I know my boyfriend doesn't even get notifications, even though he has obviously hit the bell. Um, and I'll see you guys soon.